A man once came and said, O Messenger of Allah, I have been destroyed. He asked him, What has happened to you? He replied, I had intercourse with my wife while I was fasting. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, then told him, Do you have a slave that you can free? He replied, No. He then said, Can you fast two months consecutively? He replied, No. Can you feed 60 poor people? He replied, No. The Prophet وسلم, then kept silent. When a big basket full of dates was brought to him, he said, Where is the questioner? The man replied, it is I. The Prophet said to him, take these dates and give them in charity. The man said, to someone poorer than I, O Messenger of Allah, by Allah, there is no family between Medina's mountains poorer than I. The Prophet laughed to such an extent that his premolars could be seen. He then said, feed your family with it. In addition to not eating, drinking, smoking, and having sexual relations, there are other forbidden activities during Ramadan that Muslims should not do during this blessed month. Don't waste your time. Ramadan is a precious period. Do not waste time on useless activities such as watching TV, shopping, playing games, or oversleeping. You should utilize your time constructively by indulging in praying and worship. Avoid arguing or fighting when interacting with others during Ramadan. Listening to music, songs is not acceptable during Ramadan. Do not shake hands, kiss, or hug of the opposite sex. Any intimate contact must not be done during the hours of fasting. Muslims should be more reserved during the holy month. Do not wear revealing or tight clothes. Wearing revealing or tight clothes is against the teachings of Islam. So wear respectful clothing during this period. Don't disturb the neighbors after Qiyam al -Layl. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who were before you in order that you may learn piety. Some of the things that invalidate the fast involve things coming out of the body, such as intercourse, deliberate vomiting, menstruation, and cupping. These things that come out of the body weaken it. Hence Allah has described them as being things that invalidate the fast, so that the fasting person will not combine the weakness that results from fasting with the weakness that results from these things and thus be harmed by his fast or his fast no longer be moderate. And some of the things that invalidate the fast involve things entering the body such as eating and drinking. If fasting person eats or drinks, he does not achieve the purpose of fasting. Allah has summed up the things that break the fast in the verse where he says, So now have sexual relations with them and seek that which Allah has ordained for you. And eat and drink until the white thread, light of dawn, appears to you, distinct from the black thread. Then complete your psalm, fasting, till the nightfall. In this verse, Allah mentions the main things that invalidate the fast, which are eating, drinking, and intercourse. The other things that breaks the fast were mentioned by the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him in his sunnah. There are seven things that break the fast as follows. Intercourse, masturbation, eating, and drinking, anything that is regarded as coming under the same head as eating and drinking, letting blood by means of cupping and the like, vomiting deliberately, and menstruation and postpartum bleeding.
The first of the things that invalidate the fast is intercourse. This is the most serious and the most sinful of the things that invalidate the fast. Whoever has intercourse during the day in Ramadan deliberately has invalidated his fast. Whether he ejaculates or not, he has to repent. Complete that day, make up that day's fast or later on and offer a severe expiation. No expiation is required for any of the things that break the fast apart from intercourse. The second of the things that invalidate the fast is masturbation. This means causing calculation or climax by using the hand, etc. The evidence is the words of Allah in the Hadith Qudsi in which he says of the fasting person, he gives up his food and drink and desire for my sake. Causing calculation comes under the heading of the desire which the fasting person gives up. Whoever masturbates during the day in Ramadan has to repent to Allah and refrain from eating and drinking for the rest of the day. And he has to make up that fast later on. If he starts to masturbate, then stops without calculating, he has to repent. But his fast is still valid. And he does not have to make it up later because he did not calculate. The fasting person should keep away from everything that provokes desire and shun bad thoughts. With regard to the emission of madhi, prostatic fluid, the most correct view is that it does not invalidate the fast. The third of the things that invalidate the fast is eating or drinking. This refers to food or drink reaching the stomach via the mouth. If anything reaches the stomach via the nose, this is like eating or drinking. Hence the Prophet peace and blessings of Allah be upon him said, snuff up water deeply into the nose when doing wudu, except when you are fasting. The fourth of the things that invalidate the fast is anything that is regarded as coming under the same heading as eating and drinking. This includes two things. One, transfusion of blood to one who is fasting, such as if he bleeds heavily and is given a blood transfusion. This invalidates the fast because blood is formed from food and drink. Two, receiving via a needle, as in the case of a drip, nourishing substances which take the place of food and drink because this is the same as food and drink. With regard to injections which do not replace food and drink, rather they are administered for the purpose of medical treatment such as penicillin or insulin or are given to energize the body or for the purpose of vaccinations. These do not affect the fast whether they are intravenous or intramuscular, injected into a vein or a muscle. But to be on the safe side, these injections may be given at night. Kidney dialysis in which blood is extracted, cleaned, and then returned to the body with the addition of chemical substances, such as sugars and salts, etc., is regarded as invalidating the fast. The fifth of the things that invalidate the fast is letting blood by means of cupping because the Prophet Sallallahu said the cupper and the one for whom cupping is done have both invalidated their fast donating blood comes under the same heading as cupping because it affects the body in the same way based on this it is not permissible for a person who is fasting to donate blood unless it is essential, in which case it is permissible. In that case, the donor has broken his fast and must make up that day later on. If a person suffers a nosebleed, his fast is valid because that happened involuntarily with regard to bleeding that results from extraction of a tooth, surgery, or a blood test, etc. That does not invalidate the fast because it is not cupping or something that is similar to cupping.
unless it has an effect on the body similar to that of cupping. The sixth of the things that invalidate the fast is vomiting deliberately. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever vomits involuntarily does not have to make up the fast. But whoever vomits deliberately, let him make up the fast. Whoever vomits deliberately by sticking his finger in his throat, pressing his stomach, deliberately smelling something nasty, or persisting in looking at something that makes him vomit, has to make up his fast later on. If his gorge rises, he should not suppress it because that will harm him. The seventh of the things that invalidate the fast is the blood of menses and nifas. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Is it not the case that when she gets her period, she does not pray or fast? When a woman sees the blood of her period, or nifas, postpartum bleeding, her fast becomes invalid, even if that is one moment before sunset. If a woman feels that her period has started, but no blood comes out until after sunset, her fast is still valid. If the bleeding of a woman who is menstruating or in nifas ceases at night and she has the intention of fasting, then dawn comes before she does ghusl. The view of all the scholars is that her fast is valid. It is preferable for a woman to keep her natural cycle and to accept that which Allah has decreed for her and not to take any medicine to prevent her period. She should accept what Allah has decreed for her of not fasting during her period and make up those days later on. This is what the mothers of the believers and the women of the Salaf used to do. In addition, it has been medically proven that these means of preventing menstruation are harmful and many women have suffered menstrual irregularities as a result. If a woman takes pills and her period stops, as a result, that is fine. She can fast and her fast is acceptable. These are things that invalidate the fast. All of them, apart from menses and nifas, only invalidate the fast if three conditions are met that the person was aware of the ruling and not ignorant of it, that he did it knowingly and not out of forgetfulness, and that he did it by choice and was not forced to do it.